Welcome to Operator Familiarization for the full line of Magni rotating telescopic handlers. The RTH line from Magni represents the next generation in rotating telehandlers and have been engineered and designed to be the safest, most productive, and most operator-focused machines available today. We encourage you to pay careful attention to this video so that you can become familiar with all the features and benefits available to you. Most important, by learning how to fully operate your Magni, you'll be able to work safer and more efficient, resulting in more profit. You can always reference the use and maintenance manual for more information. RTH, Introduction to the Machine. A rotating telehandler from Magni can be considered the Swiss Army knife of construction equipment. It provides you with several machines in one, serving as a telescopic forklift, rough terrain crane, mobile elevating work platform, and many more. This incredible versatility is accomplished through the availability of over 100 attachments that can be loaded in just a short couple of minutes. So let's start by introducing you to the machine. There are 16 models within the rotating telehandler lineup. Magni offers lifting heights from 57 feet to 167 feet with four machines over 100 feet and lifting capacities from 8,800 to 28,600 pounds. The model is designated by naming such as on this machine, which shows RTH 6.30 SH. The RTH standing for Rotating Telescopic Handler. Magnes rotate 360 degrees continuously in either direction. The 6 is the lifting capacity in metric tons. A metric ton is equal to 2,200 pounds. So 6 metric tons is 13,200 pounds. The 30 is the maximum lifting height in meters. A meter is equal to 3.28 feet, so 30 meters is 98 feet. The SH tells us that this machine uses a scissor type of outrigger system. We'll cover this in more detail later on in the training. All Magnes utilize the same unique and patented cab design. The cab offers an abundance of glass, providing you with full visibility for increased safety and efficiency. The cab is fully enclosed, and when the door and windows are shut, it is airtight fully pressurized, comes standard with HVAC, and has 100% inlet air filtration so you can operate safely and comfortably in most any operating environment. Windshield wipers are standard in the front, on top, and in the back of the cab to ensure superior visibility. At the top of the cab, you'll find an amber work safety strobe light. The emergency red light switches on automatically when needed. There are three rear view mirrors, two on the right and one on the left. You'll want to make sure these are properly adjusted before you begin operation of the machine. Magnes come equipped with LED work lights to provide you with enhanced visibility in darker environments. There are two on the cab facing the front, two on the cab facing the rear, and two on the boom tip facing the attachment in front. Magnes come equipped with a front and rear camera system, which includes a viewing screen in the cab. The front camera allows you to see what you're delivering and includes a one-way microphone so the person at the delivery location can communicate verbally. The rear camera is utilized when backing up and provides increased safety. The boom is made using high tensile steel, which is extremely tough and rigid, yet very lightweight. This helps to allow Magni to produce machines that have the world's highest lifting capacities for rotating telehandlers, which are from 8,800 to 28,600 pounds. You'll notice that all the chains and hoses are contained inside the boom to help eliminate breakage due to collisions. At the end of the boom is our patented quick fit system, which includes the shear pin housing and pin. Because it is lighter in weight, it helps to improve lifting capacity. In addition, its unique design makes it virtually impossible for the attachment to separate from the machine when lifted. At the boom head is an RFID reader for automatic recognition of the attachment, which then presents the proper load chart and parameters of the machine on the screen in the cab. Magnes comes standard with full-time four-wheel drive and three modes of steering, two-wheel, four-wheel, and crab. Magni rotators are legal for street use if properly registered and can travel up to 25 miles per hour when in two-wheel steering mode. Note the front lights with high and low beams along with blinkers and rear stop light with blinkers. The rear light housing located over the license plate holder has an additional light to illuminate the plate. Magnis will come equipped with a ladder. This fits into notches located at the top of each fender and allows for safe access when needing to climb the machine. Here is your DEF add blue cap. This is your fuel cap, and this is your hydraulic gauge. Looking at the various compartments, here we have the engine compartment. 
Magni utilizes engines from Mercedes, Deutz, and Volvo, depending on the model and model year. All engines are Tier 4 final to comply with the latest engine emission standards in the United States. For safety purposes, the machine will not start if the engine compartment is open. Here, we have a reversible fan, which you can activate from the cab to clean off any dust, debris, etc. Here is the battery on-off switch. Anytime you will not be using the machine for more than 24 hours, you should turn off the battery as the computer will draw power at all times and drain the battery. Next, we have the service compartment, which contains the DEF AdBlue Reservoir tank and some of the machine's computers. Also located here is the chassis fuse box. Next is another service compartment located behind the cab. In this, you'll find the windshield washer fluid reservoir, the HEPA filter, which provides 100% filtration of air before it enters the cab. Here is the radio remote receiver, this is the main computer, and here is the fuse box for the turret. Magni offers two different types of outrigger systems, scissor and pivoting. The scissor type are found on Magni's larger machines, starting with the 6-ton models. These can be managed together or individually to perfectly adapt to each workspace and provides unlimited placement due to the existence of a proximity reel in each outrigger. Regardless of the amount of extension for each outrigger from 0 to 100%, the machine is programmed to provide you with the best possible load chart for each quadrant of the machine. When closed, scissor outriggers do not affect ground clearance. Magni's pivoting stabilizers are found on our 4- and 5-ton machines and are simple to deploy and guarantee maximum stability. When retracted, they remain entirely within the machine's footprint with no protrusions and do not affect ground clearance. Cabin features. To open the cabin door, you pull on the outer door handler, being careful to hold and guide the door all the way open. Access the cab using the slip-resistant step and ergonomically placed grab bars. It's important to always maintain three points of contact when entering or exiting the cab. For Magni, the main criteria for operators are visibility and safety. Magni is fitted with floor-to-ceiling glass at the front of the cab. This means that there are very few blind spots and that you can see the load clearly when picking up from the ground or overhead. Magni's are certified for ROPS, which stands for Rollover Protection, and for FOPS, which stands for Falling Object Protection. While we review each component within the cab in greater detail later, we will now introduce you to them. First, we have the override key box. Next is the safety information plate. This is the door with its split window. Here is the left side movable joystick, allowing you easy access to exit to and from the cab. This is the emergency stop button. Moving down, we have the foot pedal, which allows you to adjust the steering column position. In the center is the telescoping steering column, and below that is the brake pedal. To the right is the accelerator foot pedal. Here is the steering wheel with knob for ease of use. On the left side of the steering column is the control for the turn signals, lights, windshield washer, and horn selector. Just beneath the steering wheel is the parking brake and emergency flasher switches. On the right side of the steering column is the ignition key and two CAN bus ports. Throughout the cabin are air vents, and here is the right joystick. The top screen is for the camera system and allows you to view the front, back, or both cameras at the same time. Here is the Magni Combi touchscreen, and these are the safety override key switches. Next is the safety override button and a USB socket. This assembly provides an automotive style joystick, which can be used as an alternative to the touchscreen controls. These switches control the leveling system on tire systems, and here are the control of the stabilizer switches, providing extension and retraction and lowering and lifting. This is the emergency hydraulic pump switch, and this is the remote control battery charger, which contains a spare battery. Up here is the emergency escape hammer, and centered behind you is the AM-FM radio. Basic operation of the machine. Your Magni should be inspected at least daily before being placed into service. If the machine is being used daily on more than one shift, it should be inspected after each shift. Please refer to your telehandler pre-operation checklist as a comprehensive checklist form. Having the discipline to conduct inspections will help to ensure the safety of the operator and those working around the machine. In addition, it will help to ensure that you enjoy the highest level of utilization possible without interruption. The Magni comes with several keys. All keys are the same for all Magni models, except for the fuel cap and DEF add blue cap, which are unique to each machine. There is one key for all of the service compartments, including the engine compartment. 
the chassis compartments, and the turret compartment. Next, we have the fuel cap key. This is the DEF or AdBlue cap key. This is the cabin key, which locks and unlocks the cabin door. This is the ignition key. These are the two override keys, one for the work platform override and one which is the safety bypass key. These two keys should always be kept in the emergency key box located in the cab. The innovative design of Magni's cab ensures unbeatable operator comfort and safety. When opening the door, it is suggested that you push in the door while pulling the handle. This will help relieve any pressure that is built up in the cabin and allow for proper function of the latch. While climbing into the cabin, it's required that you maintain three points of contact at all times. Magni cabins provide safety steps and grab bars to allow you to do this. All Magnis come with a fully adjustable seat to fit most any operator and provide a comfortable ergonomic and safe operator position. The seat has six individual adjustments. First, paying attention to the numbers on the dial. Adjust the suspension by turning the regulator to your approximate weight, clockwise to increase and counterclockwise to decrease. Next, adjust the longitudinal position of the workstation by lifting the lower bar. This will allow you to comfortably work the pedals without obstructing your feet on the floor. Next, you'll want to adjust the longitudinal position of the seat only by lifting the upper bar. You'll want to adjust this so that you can grip the joystick without shifting your elbows with your arms relaxed on the armrests. Next, adjust the seat height by pulling or pushing on the white handle. The goal is to have your knees at right angles when your feet are resting on the floor. Next, using the handle on the right side of the backrest, push down to adjust the tilt. Lastly, you can adjust the lumbar support by turning the knob on the left side of the backrest where there are three positions available. Once the seat adjustment has been completed, adjust the steering column by depressing the foot pedal to the left of the brake pedal. Next, adjust the telescopic position of the steering wheel by unlocking the lever on the right side of the steering column. Now that you're fully situated, fasten the seatbelt. This must always be done when operating the machine. There are two main reasons to use the seatbelt. One, in the event of a catastrophic incident, you will be secure. Second, because Magnes are equipped with a seat switch, if the machine is moving and you were to bounce off the seat, the machine would come to a rapid stop, which could lead to damage of both the machine and the load. Magnes comes standard with a radio. You can use this to access AM, FM stations or to plug your smartphone into it to play audio apps. There is also an auxiliary plug, which can be used to utilize a two-way radio. Here is the microphone located in the cabin. Never adjust the radio functions while operating the machine. Now we'll review the door and window operation from inside the cab. To open the door from the inside, pull the lever and hold the door as it opens to ensure it does not fly open in windy conditions. The cab door is equipped with a window to allow for natural ventilation. Turn the lever counterclockwise to unlock it and push the window out, guiding it slowly all the way until it locks in place. To release and shut the window, turn the spring-loaded lever located in the driver's side window clockwise and guide the window to a closed position. Close the lever on the window to lock it in place. The rear window of the cab can also be partially opened to allow for natural ventilation. To open it, turn the handle clockwise and push it out. To close, pull back in and lock. In the event of an emergency where you cannot open the door to exit the machine, it may be necessary to break a piece of glass to create an exit path. A red hammer is located on the right side of the cab. This is to be used to break the glass on the door or window for the driver to exit. Note, the corners are the weakest points of the glass, so you would want to hit there if needed. Moving on to the steering column, on the left side is a multifunction control handle. The horn is activated by depressing the button on the outside of the controller. Move the controller up or down to activate the right-left directional signals. Rotate the center of the handle forward to turn on the lights and backwards to turn them off. Move the handle forward to turn on the high beam lights or pull it towards you to flash the lights. To turn on the front windshield wiper, rotate the inside of the handle toward you to position 1. To activate the upper wiper along with the windshield wiper, turn the handle toward you to position 2. To turn on the rear window wiper, return to the neutral position and rotate the handle forward to position J. The rear wiper cannot be activated while the front wiper is on. Located in the center of the steering column, just behind the steering wheel, is a console with three buttons. Press the green button to the left to distribute the window washer fluid. 
This will be activated for all three wiper surfaces, but the wipers will not automatically clean the windows. You must manually turn them on. The red button located in the center is the parking brake. To engage the parking brake, the machine must be at a full stop, and then you must depress and hold the button for two full seconds. To disengage the parking brake, the machine must be in neutral, and you must depress the foot brake pedal. Then, press and hold the button for a full two seconds. The red button located on the right is used to turn on the hazard lights. Press to start and press again to stop. On the right side of the steering column, you'll find four items. On top is the ignition switch. Below this is the handle mentioned previously for the telescoping feature. Below this are the CAN bus ports, high and low, which are used for diagnosing and updating the machine. The steering wheel allows the operator to either grip the wheel traditionally or provides a knob for ease of use. Here is the full-color touchscreen. We'll come back to this in a bit. Located on the touchscreen panel are two emergency switches. On the left is the safety override bypass key. Because magnets are highly intelligent, the machine knows when it has entered a zone that is very close to being unsafe to operate in. When this happens, the machine will stop that particular function. By using the override key, you're able to return the machine back to the safe zone and continue to operate. To use this override function, remove the key from the red override key box and insert it into the switch. Depending on what is comfortable for you, using your left or right hand, turn the key in either direction a quarter turn and depress and hold. You may hear an audible alarm and the warning alarm on the screen will flash. Keeping in mind that once you depress the key, you have 10 seconds, reverse the function that caused the issue to begin with. If needed, release the key and depress again to gain more time. If the issue continues, you should immediately notify your authorized Magni dealer. Under no circumstances should the override key ever be used to pick and lift things that are beyond the capacity of the machine, as this is very dangerous. Magnes are outfitted with a black box recorder which will record this activity should you attempt it. On the right is the work platform override bypass switch, which is to be used in the event that the work platform is not functioning properly. To use the work platform override function, remove the black key from the red override key box and insert it into the switch. Using your right hand, turn the key clockwise a quarter turn and hold with your thumb and index fingers in that position. You may hear an audible alarm and the warning alarm on the screen will flash. Again, from your right hand, use your pinky finger to depress the red button located on the right side control panel. You can now use the left joystick to lower the work platform. Located on the right side of the operator compartment is a control panel. It is very important that this panel and all components contained within it are kept clean at all times. You should definitely avoid spilling anything on it as well. Starting from just below the screen, on the left side, is a USB port with a black cap. This is only to be used by an authorized technician for updating the screen software. To the right of this is a red button, which is only to be used in conjunction with the work platform override key as described previously. Moving closer to you is the Magni Combi Touch Joystick and touchpad. We'll cover this later. Next is the switch which controls the frame leveling when on tires only. This is a momentary switch, which means it works only while being held down. Depress the switch left to level left and right to level right. This would be used when traveling on a surface that is uneven or when using the machine as a forklift where the boom is fully retracted and you need to level the forks to make your pick. Next is the outrigger extension and retraction switch, which only applies to scissor style outriggers. This is a momentary switch, which means it only works while being held down. Depress the switch to the left to extend and to the right to retract. Next on the left is the outrigger up and down switch. This is a momentary switch, which means it works only while being held down. This switch is used for both pivoting and scissor type outriggers. Push forward to go down and back to go up. Next is the auxiliary emergency pump in red. This is to be used when there is a power failure and you have either a load or work platform in the air. This will allow you to perform most of the hydraulic functions, including rotation, boom tilt, and telescopic movements in order to get the machine to a safe position while awaiting service. 
To utilize this, slide back the safety on top of the switch and press the button down to engage the pump. This is not a momentary switch. Once you press it, it will stay in place until you lift it up. Important, this switch is never to be used when the engine is on. Moving to the joystick controls, all RTH models are equipped with dual joysticks, with each having a dead man switch, which is a safety feature that prevents unwanted functions from occurring. You must engage the dead man switch while performing each joystick function. The left joystick is used to telescope the boom and rotate the cab. You push it forward to boom out and pull back to boom in. You move the stick to the left to rotate left, and right to rotate right. The thumb roller switch is used to control auxiliary hydraulics for attachments such as a winch or grapple or saw. Moving to the right joystick, this is used to boom up and down and tilt the forks. You push forward to boom down and pull back to boom up. You move the stick to the left to tilt up and right to tilt down. The right joystick contains a three-position thumb rocker switch, which is used as the drive selector. Forward to drive, neutral, center to park, and back for reverse. To start the machine, insert the key into the ignition switch and turn it clockwise one click only. This will not start the machine, rather it will allow the machine to fully load all the software and systems necessary to operate the machine. To validate that the machine is ready to start, view the rollover indicator bar graph, which will be at zero when ready. To start the engine, the transmission must be in neutral. Turn the key clockwise an additional click and hold until the engine starts. Now let's review the control panel. Located on the right side of the cab, you will find a full color touchscreen and mini round joystick with buttons. The user-friendly touchscreen is used to manage the whole machine. It is very easy to navigate, highly intuitive, and can present in 12 different languages. The machine management software installed on the touchscreen gathers all usage data and displays them over five different pages on the screen. Navigating between these pages is extremely easy, even for beginners. Navigation and selection can be achieved either by touching the screen or via the round joystick, whichever you prefer. The Magni has integrated diagnostics for fast and simple troubleshooting of electrical issues resulting in less downtime. If a fault is detected, the system automatically shuts off any movement likely to worsen the fault and displays an alarm code, which you can share with your dealer's service department. So let's go ahead and explore this amazing system. As mentioned previously, there are five pages available. You will find that all of the pages contain the following items. On the top left corner of the screen is a Magni M. Depressing this will provide access to various service menus. You should not utilize this function unless you're a trained service technician or are being instructed remotely to do so by your dealer. On the top right corner of the screen is the warning alarm, which will flash if needed to indicate an issue with the machine. If flashing, depress that item, which will provide you with specific codes that should be shared with a Magni authorized service technician. At the top left center of the screen is the time of day. At the top right center is the total hours logged on the machine. At the bottom of each screen, you'll notice right and left arrows. These can be used to toggle between the five screens. On all screens, anytime a button is displayed in the color blue, this indicates that the function is on or active. Now let's review the driving page. The driving page contains the options available to the driver relating to driving the machine. In the upper screen area, at the top left of the page, is the selection for the speed range. There are two speeds available. You have Turtle, which is slow, and Rabbit, which is high. Turtle is the low gear and is mostly used when additional torque is needed. This would include on the job site, when loading the machine on a flatbed, or when moving up an incline. Rabbit is the high gear and used when the operator desires to drive the machine at a higher rate of speed. The Magni can go up to 25 miles per hour, but this should only be done when the machine is in two-wheel steering mode. The turret is locked and the boom is fully retracted and the attachment is secured. Anytime you're on outriggers, we suggest that you put the machine in Rabbit mode as the hydraulic functions will perform faster. To set the speed range, the machine must first be in neutral with the engine at idle. Depress the brake pedal and touch the button to activate the mode you want. You'll actually see a turtle or rabbit image. At the top center is your speed indicator, which is displayed in miles per hour. 
At the top right is the transmission reset button, which will reset the synchronizers in the transmission if needed. Next, we have the DEF add blue gauge, which indicates the percentage of fluid remaining in the tank. It is important to note that this level must be maintained at over 25% or the machine will derate and the engine function will diminish. While you can override this, if you do it more than three times, the engine will not come out of derate mode and an authorized dealer will be required to visit the machine. Next is the RPM gauge. Here is the engine temperature gauge. Located in the center is your fuel gauge. Magnes only operate using diesel fuel. Clustered between these gauges is the instrument panel, which contains many warning lights. Should you encounter one, please refer to your manual and call your authorized dealer. Here is the parking brake indicator light to let you know it is engaged or not. Looking at the middle of the screen, you will see two circles over the top of the machine picture. The top smaller circle illustrates the position of the turret rotation. When the green is illuminated, the turret is positioned over the center. The large white circle illustrates the level of the machine's chassis. There is a green bubble sensor which shows the actual position. When the bubble sensor is located within the small center circle, it tells you that the machine is level. Unless moving the machine, you should always operate it when the machine is fully level. On the left side of the machine picture, there are three buttons that allow you to select the type of steering. Starting from the top and working down, one, front, two-wheel steering, two, all, four-wheel steering, three, crab, all tires facing in the same direction. To change between steering modes, turn the wheel straight until the tire indicator turns green. Depress the brake pedal and push the desired steering function button, which will turn blue when activated. If the wheels are not straight, the desired steering function button will blink. To correct, simply turn the steering wheel slowly to straighten the wheels and steering function will engage. To the right side of the machine picture and starting from the top, there is an indicator that is only used when the Nordic package, which is for extreme cold weather environments, is installed on the machine. If it were, this would indicate whether the turret rotation is locked or not. Next, you'll find a circle next to the front and rear tires, which will illuminate green when each of the tires are straight. Working down from the top, you'll find a button that switches from two to four-wheel drive. All Magnes in the United States come with full-time four-wheel drive, so you can ignore this button. Below this is the boom damper, whose function is to minimize vibration to the boom and the load when the machine is moving. This should be engaged when driving any distance or at high speed with or without a load. Below is the Eco option. When the Eco mode function is engaged, the machine can drive at the maximum speed using only 1800 RPM, which provides increased fuel efficiency. Located below the machine picture are plus and minus buttons. These are used to increase or decrease the RPMs during warm-up. Lastly, in the center is the chassis tilt lock for the rear axle. This is an automatic function and acts as an indicator only. Next is the stabilization page. Magni RTH machines are unique in that the stabilizers provide an unlimited setup potential resulting in the best load chart possible under all conditions. The stabilization page is where you control the stabilizers and level the machine. You can operate all four outriggers at once or one at a time. Starting from the top left area of the screen, note the button that looks like a bullseye. This is the self-leveling button and is used in conjunction with the outrigger down switch to level the machine. To the right is the button with four check marks, which allows you to turn on or off all four outriggers at once. Moving to the middle section, next to each tire is a button with a single check mark. If you want to operate a single outrigger, use the four check marks button on top to turn them all off, and then press the appropriate buttons to turn on the one you want to activate. Once you've made your selection of which outriggers you'd like to deploy, you will use the rocker switch located on the right side control panel to extend and retract. Each outrigger is equipped with a proximity reel that will illustrate what percentage your outriggers are deployed. When fully extended, you'll see 100% on the screen next to each outrigger. Once your outriggers are extended to the desired positions, push on the self-leveling button, bullseye, located at the top, so that it is blue and circled in blue. Once this is complete, use the outrigger down switch, located on the right side control panel, to level the machine. Depress and hold the switch in the down position and do not let go. The outriggers will lower to the ground and the machine will lift up and start to level. While this function may stop momentarily, keep holding the button down. 
The machine will check for level and a box will present itself on the screen saying leveling in progress. The machine will make any final adjustments to ensure that it is level. Once the green bubble indicator is centered in the machine, you can release the button. Above or below each outrigger button, you'll notice a circle with what looks like a hologram. This will illustrate whether your outrigger feet are up or down, and when you have a good ground contact, as evidenced by turning green in color. When the machine is on outriggers, all four must have good ground contact. To lift and retract the outriggers, depress the outrigger up switch located on the right side control panel. Hold the button until the hologram circles indicate that the feet are in the up position. Next, push and hold the outrigger in switch located on the right side control panel. Looking at the screen, you'll see the outriggers moving in and the percentage going down. Hold the button down until all four show 0%. The machine is now ready to be moved. Magni provides an alternative method for operating the outriggers by using the small round joystick located on the right control panel. In order to engage this, you will activate the lock button on the bottom left of the screen. The four holograms will show you by positioning the joystick the function that will happen. Push the joystick left to extend, right to retract, forward for down, back for up. Last is the button on the bottom right. This activates the Bluetooth connection with the radio remote. Next is the load chart page. Magni uses a load moment indicator system, commonly known as LMI, which meets all the criteria for crane regulations. The screen includes a dynamic load chart and all key metrics, which allows the operator to know everything about the load, including where it is located within the chart. This Magni technology eliminates the opportunity for the operator to move into an unsafe zone. This allows you to work faster and safer, resulting in increased productivity. The first thing to note is that once your attachment is secured to the machine, it will be recognized by the RFID system. On the screen, you will notice a graphic representation of the attachment, and at the top of the screen, it will list the attachment name. The top area of the screen provides detailed information about your load and the position of the boom. On the top left, there are four measurements which represent the boom position. At the top left is listed the boom length, which is the measurement from the back of the boom to the boom tip. At the top right is the boom height indicator, which is the measurement from the ground to the bottom of the attachment. At the bottom left is the boom angle, which measures the angle from the ground to the bottom of the attachment in degrees. At the bottom right is the radius extension, which is the horizontal measurement from the center of the machine to the load center. On the top right, there are four indicators. This section provides detailed information about your load and the position of the boom. At the top left, it shows you the degrees of rotation of the turret. To the right is a machine picture showing all four measurements we just reviewed that are on the left side of the screen. On the bottom left is the maximum capacity available, which is based on the attachment being used, and on the bottom right is the actual weight being picked. Moving to the center of the machine picture with the gray outline shows you your safe operating zones around the machine, which are based on the positioning of the outriggers. Moving to the middle of the page is the active load chart, which has the anvil in the red circle displaying the location of the load. This anvil moves within the chart as you move the load up or down and in or out. The numbers in yellow are a repeat of the numbers at the top left of the screen. Next is the command page. Starting at the top of the screen are the climate controls. All Magni's come standard with full heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. On the left, you will find the button to turn on the air conditioning. When the color is blue, it is on. To the right is the air recirculation button, which when turned on, will ensure that the air coming through the HVAC system is filtered. Magni uses a HEPA filter system, which allows the operator to work in most any conditions while ensuring their safety. Moving just below to the left is the temperature control. You can adjust hotter or colder by pressing the plus or minus signs. To the right is the fan speed control. There are three settings which are adjusted by pressing the plus or minus signs. In the middle of the screen, you'll find the controls for the various working lights. Starting from the right is the button for the boom tip LED work lights. Moving right is the button for the front cab LED work lights. Next is the button to turn on the working beacon light. This amber-colored light can be turned on to signal that the machine is in use, and it is recommended that you use this feature. On the far right is the button for the back of cab LED work lights. On the bottom portion of the screen, and starting at the top left, is the drive lock. 
Again, this is not a working feature of the machine, so you can ignore. Moving to the right is the boom damper, whose function is to minimize vibration to the boom and the load when the machine is moving. This should be engaged when driving any distance or at high speed with or without a load. Next is the auto RPM selector, which ensures that the machine has a minimum level of RPMs when making picks, etc. This should be left on at all times. Next is the button that activates the Bluetooth connection with the radio remote. The next button is to activate the optional 24 volt power supply. This is not something that is commonly used in the United States, so you can ignore this. Lastly is the button to engage the reverse radiator fan. Magnes comes standard with an inverted radiator, and the fan can be set to blow in reverse to eliminate debris to allow for better airflow. If you activate this, be aware you will hear some noises that are different than under normal function. This is only used if you're working in conditions such as high levels of dust, heavy snowfall, or falling debris. Moving to the bottom row, and starting from the left, you have the constant hydraulics button, which activates the ability to adjust the hydraulic pressure that is available at the boom tip. This function is to be activated only when using certain specialty attachments, such as drills and hammers. The minus and plus buttons are used to adjust the boom tip hydraulic flow up and down. Last is the customization page. The customization page allows you to program certain functions in order to optimize the safety and efficiency available from your Magni. While we introduce these functions now, the use of them will be covered in the advanced training module. The top area of the screen provides detailed information about your load and the position of the boom. On the top left, there are four measurements which represent the boom position. At the top left is listed the boom length, which is the measurement from the back of the boom to the boom tip. At the top right is the boom height indicator, which is the measurement from the ground to the bottom of the attachment. At the bottom left is the boom angle, which measures the angle from the ground to the bottom of the attachment in degrees. At the bottom right is the radius extension, which is the horizontal measurement from the center of the machine to the load center. In the center is a graphic representation of the rotation of the turret. On the top right, there are four indicators. At the top left, it shows you the degrees of rotation of the turret. To the right is a machine picture showing all four measurements we just reviewed that are on the left side of the screen. On the bottom left is the maximum capacity available, which is based on the attachment being used, and on the bottom right is the actual weight being picked. The middle left section is where you can program the limits for the turret rotation. To the middle right is where you can program the limits for boom extension and height. To the far right is the on-off button to activate or turn off the limits you've programmed. The bottom of the page is where you can adjust the hydraulic flow related to certain functions and allows you to increase or decrease the speed of these functions. Starting at the top left is where you adjust the speed for a winch, basket rotation, fork positioner, etc. Just below this is the fork tilt. Moving to the center, top left, is the rotation right and below that is rotation left. At the top center, we have the boom up, and below that is boom down. At the top right is the boom extension, and below that is boom retraction. To the far right, we have four different memory settings, which are similar to the way you program your car seat settings. Below is the power button for this section, if off, all functions will operate at 100%. If on, they will operate in accordance with the limits you have set. The Remote Control Magnes are equipped with a remote control that allows you to operate the machine from outside of the cab. The standard remote control allows you to control the hydraulic movements of the turret, boom, attachments, etc. Magni also offers an advanced remote control, which also allows for management of the stabilizers and provides the ability to drive the machine at a low rate speed. In this video, we'll review the standard remote only. In order to operate the machine using the standard remote control, you must ensure that the following items are completed. One, the machine must be turned on with the engine running. Two, the parking brake must be engaged. 3. The machine must be up on stabilizers, not on tires, and the machine must be fully leveled. Next, navigate to the command page on the screen and activate the radio remote control button by pressing it. The button will turn blue, indicating that it is on. Now, place the remote control on the floor of the cab and using three points of contact, exit the cab. 
Once you're on the ground, retrieve the remote and place the strap comfortably around your neck. We do not recommend using the remote without the strap as you do not want to drop it and cause any damage. Moving your attention to the left side of the remote, make sure the key on the remote control is in the off position, which is position zero where the key will be horizontal. Next, make sure the emergency red stop button is in the up position. Moving back to the left side of the remote, turn the key on to position one, and then push the green button once and hold it until you hear the horn on the magnet beep. When the horn beeps, it indicates that you have successfully paired the remote control to the machine and you're ready to operate remotely. Once you've paired the remote properly, you can control all the functions having to do with the turret, boom, and attachments. The joysticks on the remote control mirror the joysticks in the cab. For turret function, use the left joystick moving right to rotate right and left to rotate left. For boom function, you will use both joysticks moving the right joystick back to boom up and forward to boom down and the left joystick forward to extend the boom and back to retract the boom. For attachments, use the right joystick to tilt up and down for leveling purposes, moving left to tilt up and right to tilt down. For attachments with additional hydraulic functionality, such as a winch with a cable, after you have leveled the attachment, you'll need to move the toggle switch to the optional position in order to operate the additional functionality. You'll use the right joystick for this, and we'll need to test the attachment to understand whether to move the joystick left or right to control it. The radio remote offers you the ability to increase or decrease the engine RPMs. This could be used when lifting heavy loads to avoid having the engine stall. The toggle switch is located at the top left center. If you're operating the machine but need to take a short break, you can turn the engine off and on from the remote. To turn the engine off, turn the key on the left side of the remote control from the 1 to 0 position. To turn the engine back on, you must first turn the key on the left side of the remote control from 0 to 1. Next, push the green button once and hold it until you hear the horn on the Magni beep, and then release it. Then for a second time, press and hold the green button to start the engine. Once it starts, you can release it. Again, using the remote to turn the engine on and off is only for short breaks. Keep in mind that the key in the cab is still in the on position during this time. If you're wanting to shut the machine down for any extended period of time, this must be done by turning the key off in the cab. When you're finished using the radio remote, you must turn it off by turning the key to the zero position. Failure to do so will drain the battery. An additional battery should be located in the cabin in the charger. Keep in mind, the battery will only charge while the machine is on. Programming limits. Magnes allow you to set limits in order to create the safest, most productive, and efficient working environment possible. Limits can be set for the turret rotation, boom height, and boom extension. This ability to set limits helps to prevent hitting objects such as buildings, power lines, trees, etc. In addition, when doing repetitive tasks, setting limits will allow you to work faster. You can have multiple limits set at the same time. To set limits, you will utilize the customization page on the full color touchscreen. The first thing you must do is to turn on the limits page feature. This is done by pressing the power button located in the center lower right portion of the screen. Once the power is on, you can go ahead and set your limits. At the center of the page, on the top left, you'll find two buttons, which are for boom extension left and boom extension right. In order to set the limit, you extend the boom to the desired length, left or right, and then press and hold the corresponding button for three seconds. The button will turn blue, and the numeric representation of the length in inches will be displayed next to it. At the center of the page, and to the right, you will find one button which is used for the boom height. In order to set this limit, you extend and lift the boom to the desired location and then press and hold the button for three seconds. The button will turn blue and the numeric representation in feet will be displayed next to it. At the center of the page, on the bottom left, you'll find two buttons which are for turret rotation left, which is negative, and right, which is positive. In order to set the limit, you rotate the turret to the desired position, left or right, and then press and hold the corresponding button for three seconds. The button will turn blue and the numeric representation of the length in inches will be displayed next to it. Working with attachments. 
With over 100 available attachments, Magni Rotating Telescopic Handlers provide unparalleled versatility by giving you multiple machines in one. This means your Magni will function as a telescopic forklift, rough terrain crane, aerial work platform, and even more. In this section, we'll review how to attach your attachments and how to utilize a work platform. The Magni uses a patented Q-Fit Quick Connect system at the boom tip to load and secure all attachments. Most of them require a simple hookup with the Q-Fit, while others require additional connections for electric and or hydraulic function. Before using any attachment, always inspect it carefully to ensure that it has no visible damage and that all parts are intact before fitting it to the Magni. For standard connections, position the attachment on a level and stable surface with the Q-Fit mount facing the machine. Keeping in mind that you'll need to boom out to connect with the attachments, make sure there is sufficient space to operate the machine. While you can hook up the attachment with the turret rotated, it is recommended that you do this when the turret is at zero degrees, which is straight in front of the machine. As you approach the attachment, the boom should be completely retracted and lowered as far as possible without hitting the ground. Make sure that the boom tip cylinder is completely closed, as this will make it easier for the hookup. Extend the boom very slowly, making sure as you approach the attachment that the Q-Fit is properly aligned. Once you've made contact, raise the attachment enough so that it is fully seated on the boom head. Now you can lower the boom tip cylinder until the Q-Fit is perfectly aligned with the attachment. Once you have properly hooked up the attachment, on the load chart page, it will ask you to acknowledge the attachment. Ensure that it is correct and then depress the button. Finally, and for complete safety, you must exit the cab and secure the attachment with the locking rod provided by Magni. Make sure that you secure the cotter pin as well. For attachments that have additional electric and hydraulic connections, first turn off the machine before making these connections. This will ensure that there's no power or pressure when hooking them up. After you hook up your electric and or hydraulics, you should test them to ensure proper function of the attachment. Aerial Work Platforms All aerial work platforms are operated by using the radio remote from inside the basket. While you can hook up the platform and transport it to the location at which you wish to work, you can only operate it with the machine positioned and up on stabilizers. Because you'll be hooking up hydraulic and electric connections, turn off the machine after securing the platform with the Q-Fit, leave the machine, and secure the locking rod. Next, you'll connect the two hydraulic lines that are located on the platform to the fittings located on the boom tip, A to A and B to B. You'll hear the quick connect snap into place, and you can pull on it to make sure that they're properly secured. Next, you'll hook up the electrical harness with the male connector located on the platform to the female connector located on the boom tip. You must be careful to use the guided keyways provided and not force the connectors together so you do not damage or bend the pins. If you do, the platform will not work, and it will require a service visit from your authorized Magni dealer. When transporting the work platform on tires to your work area, you must keep the boom retracted and below 10 feet in height or the safety system will lock you out and you will not be able to move the machine. If this happens, you'll need to use the platform override key to reposition the boom. Once you reach your work area, the machine must be positioned with the machine on stabilizers, fully leveled, parking brake on, and the transmission in neutral. Lower the platform to grade level, being careful to be a few inches off the ground. Leave the machine running and exit the cab with your radio remote in hand and the cab door closed. Important, before anyone enters the work platform, they must be outfitted with full OSHA compliant PPE, including a proper fall protection harness, hard hat, eye protection, etc. Place the remote control on the floor of the platform in an area where you will not step on it and carefully step into the work platform by raising the access bar and immediately hook your harness to the eyelets provided on the platform. Locate the radio remote and secure it into the remote support tray. Before hooking up the electric connection, you must ensure that the red emergency stop button on the remote is in the up position. Next, you'll hook up the electrical harness to the radio remote. Again, you must be careful to use the guided keyway provided and not force the connectors together, so you do not damage or bend the pins. On the left side of the remote, turn the key to the on position, moving it from zero to one. Depress and hold the green button until you hear the audible alarm, and you are now ready to operate the aerial work platform. 
The work platform is easily controlled through the use of the joysticks on the remote control. You can control turret rotation, boom lift, extension, and retraction, RPMs of the engine, along with platform rotation and tilt. The functions of the remote when used in the platform are the same as described previously with the addition of the tilt optional toggle switch. When tilt is selected, you can use the right joystick to level the work platform. It is important to note that this function can only be done when the platform is fully lowered close to the ground, so you'll want to do this before you start operating the platform. When optional is selected, you can use the right joystick to rotate the work platform left or right. If the work platform is equipped with additional functionality, such as a winch, to operate that feature, you'll need to toggle the momentary Opt Select switch to select the corresponding number provided on the platform to the number listed on the bottom center of the remote, which will light up when selected. It is very important that while you're operating from the work platform, nobody enters the cab and tries to operate the machine. The only exception to this would be in the event of an emergency. Safety Tips Read and familiarize yourself with the operator manual. Perform maintenance as per the manufacturer's recommended schedule. Always utilize your pre-operation checklist before operating the machine. Ensure that there are no loose items on the machine or near the engine. Always use three points of contact when entering or exiting the cab. Always wear your seatbelt. Never transport people on the fenders. Stay a minimum of 10 feet away from electrical lines. Do not touch the engine while it's operating. Do not overfill the fuel tank. Keep the DEF fluid above 25% full. When transporting the machine, always engage the turret lock. When driving the machine any distance, use the boom damper function. Focus on control over speed while operating the machine. Thank you again for taking the time to review this video. With proper training and use, we're confident that you'll find your Magni will provide you with the safest, most efficient, and most productive machine for all of your lifting needs. If you have any questions, please refer to your operator manual or contact your authorized Magni dealer.